Chris Graham here for Trailblazer RV with a new RV orientation on this 2021 Venture RV Sport Trek 320 VIK. Starting right here at the front of the trailer where you've got your propane and battery systems. To access your propane bottles, just lift up on the propane cover and you've got two 20 pound propane tanks. Both of these are full right now and an automatic switch over propane regulator. Uh, and you can see the arrow on this regulator pointing to this bottle. That makes this the supply bottle and this the reserve. What we recommend is opening both bottles and letting the regulator deplete the supply bottle before it starts to pull from the reserve bottle. You can see on the front of the regulator a little sight glass showing red. That shows that there's no propane flowing from the supply bottle. But as I open that valve, that sight glass goes from red to clear showing that there's propane flowing and if we open both bottles now that regulator will uh, completely empty this bottle before it starts to pull from this bottle at that point you can switch the regulator over remove the first bottle to go and refill it or exchange it uh, without having to shut down your propane system right behind the propane tanks is where you'll find your battery this is the standard uh, group 24 12 volt uh, RV battery. Uh, two wires going to it, red to positive, black to negative, um, and it is a maintenance battery. Uh, so once or twice a year what we recommend is lifting these two caps off the top of the battery where you'll find six cells filled with fluid. Check the fluid level in those cells. If it looks a little bit low in any of the cells and especially if you can see metal plates sticking through, you can top that up with some distilled water and put a good charge on the battery. Also recommend removing this battery for winter storage, storing it inside somewhere where it's not going to freeze, preferably not on a concrete surface. And if you get an opportunity to, uh, put a trickle charge on the battery once over the course of the uh, off season. Right behind the battery, you've got a battery disconnect switch. So if you store your RV in a storage facility, uh, when you drop it off for storage, you may want to disconnect that battery just so that there's no uh, draw from the coach then if, you, if the battery was full when you put it away, it should still be full when you retrieve it. For now, we'll leave that in the on position. This trailer uh, is getting set up with a Husky Centerline equalizer hitch. For more information on that hitch, uh, check out our connecting a trailer with a Husky Centerline equalizer hitch video. Around the side of the trailer, You've got your pass-through storage here. This is where you'll find your 30 amp power cord. So this attaches to the side of the trailer. And then some of the time when you're camping at a 30 amp site, you'll be able to plug it in with just the cord. We also supply the adapter to break it down to a 15 amp household uh, uh, plug so you can plug it in at home. Also here in the front storage compartment is where you'll find access to your water pump. So just two little uh, Robertson screws to remove to uh, open up this access panel. And here you have your water pump and your antifreeze siphon line. So you've got a couple of valves here that you can turn um, to uh, switch the pump suction from the water tank to the siphon line. Then you can put this, uh, this hose into your jug of antifreeze when it comes time to winterize. You can pump directly from the jug of antifreeze through all of the water lines in the trailer. The trailer is winterized now, so when you go to use it the first time in the spring, you will have to uh, open the valve to pump water from the fresh water holding tank. On the topic of your fresh water system, uh, this is where you'll fill that holding tank. Uh, you can do that with just a normal garden hose or what we recommend is one of those white drinking water specific garden hoses so you don't get the plastic taste in your water. If you're parked at a site with water hookups, you can connect a water hose right to here to pressurize the water lines from the uh, source. If you're hooking up to city water pressure, we recommend using a water pressure regulator. It's just a little brass piece about this big, it goes on the end of your hose to uh, ensure you've got proper uh, operating water pressure in the trailer and that you don't overpressurize the lines. 
to drain the fresh water out of the tank, if you draw a straight line down from here, you'll find your uh, fresh water drain valve. As the trailer is winterized right now, this is open. When you go to uh, fill the tank with water the first time in the spring, you'll need to close this valve. Here at the trailer's running gear, I'd just like to point out a couple of things. Uh, we've torqued your, your wheel nuts to 100 foot-pounds, and we do recommend with towable RVs periodically retorquing those wheel nuts. Uh, also, your tires are inflated to 80 PSI. Uh, it says right on the side, side wall of the tire, 80 PSI. And we do recommend go ahead and run those tires right at 80 PSI. Um, you'll need to periodically repack wheel bearings. Um, but with this model, it has easy lube axles on it. So if you pop the center cap off of here, you'll be able to find a grease zerk. And you, and you can use a grease gun to grease your inner and outer wheel bearings. Now doing that doesn't eliminate the need to repack your wheel bearings but it does prolong the intervals so instead of um, repacking wheel bearings every single year uh, as long as you're giving them a little bit of fresh grease once in a while you can probably get away with repacking wheel bearings every three to five years depending on how often and how much you tow right behind that is your sewer termination so this is where you'll dump your holding tanks from we supply a new sewer hose. It's stored right now in the rear bumper. Uh, it's a 20-foot medium heavy-duty sewer hose. Attaches right onto here. The other end of the, of the hose goes into the ground, obviously. And then to dump your holding tanks, you have two valves here. A uh, black sewer valve and a gray wastewater valve. Always dump the sewer first. Then once that's finished dumping, you can close that valve and open the wastewater valve to use that uh, gray water, that sink and shower water to flush the sewage contents through, through the hose. Uh, as the RV is winterized, these valves are both open right now as well. Remember when you summarize the RV to close these so that you don't have um, a bunch of sewage contents sitting in the, uh, in the sewer hose the first time you go to use it. Another water connection here at the back. Uh, this is your black tank flush system. So when you're dumping that black holding tank, the sewer holding tank, you can hook a garden hose up to here and turn on the water and it'll spray out the inside of that tank. So it'll just spray off the monitor probes and the walls of the tank and just kind of keep everything, uh, everything a little cleaner inside that tank. And right here, you've got an outside shower Pretty simple operation there. It has hot and cold water. Uh, the shower head comes up to about this high. Uh, don't forget to winterize this uh, when you do your winterizing. It's a part that's commonly forgotten. And as a result, we replace a lot of these every spring. Around the back of the trailer, you've got a hitch on the, uh, on the back of the trailer here. Uh, the hitch is rated for 250 pounds. So uh, you can get a cart, you can get cargo trays or bike carriers or any number of hitch mount accessories. Make sure you don't exceed the 250 pound capacity. And uh, that sewer hose that I talked about is stored here inside this bumper. Also on the back of the trailer is your hot water tank. So this is a gas electric direct spark ignition hot water tank. Uh, so you can run it on propane or electricity. A couple of things out here to know about. Uh, the tank is drained right now, obviously, because it's winterized. To drain the tank, you'll pull this plug out of the bottom. Um, and also on this uh, drain plug is what's called an anode rod. Uh, so the anode rod serves to protect the inside lining of the tank. Uh, the impurities in the water will corrode this rod rather than the tank lining. So this does need to be replaced uh, every once in a while. Uh, it can get quite pitted and corroded looking before you need to replace it. It's still doing its job. But once it gets down to just that tiny little bar in the center, then you'll want to replace this. Uh, they're available uh, in our parts department. And uh, you'll need to do that, again, depending on the, uh, the quality of the water, um, every three to five years likely. 
Inside the tank here, there's a couple of reset buttons. If you ever overheat the tank uh, if it, and it fails to uh, start up on propane or electricity, uh, come out here and just press in on these two reset buttons to reset those uh, energy cutoffs. And you've got a water pressure relief valve here. If the tank ever overpressurizes, it'll pop this and bleed some water out. Also, uh, make sure before you pull the plug out when you're winterizing that you pull this relief valve to bleed the pressure off of the tank so that there's no, uh, there's no water pressure in there when you pull the plug. And last thing to point out uh, on the tank, if you do plan to run it on electricity, if, if you're out of sight with power hookups, uh, there's a little black rocker switch at the bottom here that will need to be turned on. Uh, we leave that off uh, to ensure that you don't ever accidentally start up the uh, tank on electricity. But if you are parked out of sight and you want to uh, operate the tank electrically, you'll have to turn that on. Follow me around this side. Here you have your outside kitchen. Nothing too complicated here. Uh, your fridge uh, runs on electricity only. So unlike your uh, main uh, RV fridge, this doesn't run on propane. You need to be hooked up to power. Your stove top does use propane. It's just a simple two burner uh, stove top that you'll light with a barbecue lighter. You need to hook up the propane line on here. So right underneath the stove, you'll find a quick connect coupler right here. And another one uh, down underneath, there's actually two here, one for the stove and one for uh, supplemental appliance, if you have. And you'll find that quick connect line right here. Um, so just connect both quick connects and both quick connects will have a valve on them as well. So that'll be in the closed position when you connect it. You'll need to open that for any propane to flow. got these stabilizer jacks on all four corners of the trailer. Once you're parked somewhere and relatively level, you can crank those down to be snug with the ground just to take some of the movement out of the trailer. They're not designed for leveling, so we don't recommend actually lifting the trailer uh, off the ground with these. You'll want to get pretty close to level before you deploy those. A couple of vents here on the camping side. You've got your furnace vent here. Uh, just worth uh, uh, knowing that this gets very hot when the furnace is running. So if you've got young kids around the RV, make sure they know not to touch that. And your fridge vent here. Um, so you can open this up to access the back of the fridge for some repair and maintenance work or just cleaning. Uh, but for the most part, this is just a vent. The fridge needs some air movement in the back for it to work properly. And here you've got your power awning. We'll show you how to actually uh, deploy the awning uh, once we get inside with the switch. Uh, this is an easily ad height adjustable power awning. Uh, so these little uh, tabs right here, you can push in on those and lift up. The higher you lift this tab, the lower the awning arm will sit. So if you want to leave one arm tilted down, uh, so the rainwater can run off. Uh, both of these arms are height adjustable. Here at the entry door, you've got the more ride step. So the step just folds up into the entry door like this. To release it, pull the uh, release lever here. And the uh, legs are height adjustable. So you can press in on this little adjustment here to uh, lower the legs if you need the space and set them to the proper height. If you're parked on the street in front of a curb or something like that or an unlevel uh, spot, you may need to adjust those legs. Come on inside and we'll show you a few things in there. First thing I'm gonna show you is right here uh, near the entry door is the control, uh, control panel. So two light switches here, one for your main interior lighting and one for your outside yard light. 
This is also where you'll find your slide switches. And obviously that's the first thing we should do when we go into the trailer. So if we just press and hold the out button, the slides will extend. Slide number one is your kitchen slide. Number two is your main living area slide. And this is a flush floor slide. So you'll notice as it goes out, it, uh, it, when it reaches its full extension, it'll kind of sink down to make a flush transition with the floor. And when you hear the ratcheting sound, that means it's all the way out. When you hear that, just take your finger off the button. And slide switch number three is for the bunk slide. Same thing, flush floor slide, you'll hear that ratcheting sound once it's fully extended. There we go. Um, also at the uh, control panel here, this is where you'll operate that awning. Um, so you can press and hold the extend button to extend the awning fabric and this will extend eight feet you don't have to go the entire eight feet though you can stop it at any point if there's a tree or another RV in the way and then once that's fully extended you can then adjust the uh, height when it's extended as well so uh, either way whether it's extended or put away you can uh, make those height adjustments I actually find it easier to adjust with the awning in than out a uh, couple of other little things on this monitor panel. Uh, this is where you'll find your tank monitors. Uh, so you can check the fresh uh, water level is completely empty right now. Battery is completely charged. Black uh, and gray holding tanks are both empty. Uh, you have black one and black two and gray one and gray two. This particular trailer, the 320DIK, only has a single black holding tank and a single gray holding tank. Other Venture RV models have multiple tanks. That's why there's multiple buttons there. Um, and uh, here you've got your water heater switches to run your water heater on propane gas. Um, you can turn that, uh, that switch on right there to run the water heater on electricity. This switch right here. Remember, if you're running it on electricity, you also have to have that black rocker switch on the outside of the tank turned on. Also, where you'll toggle your water pump on and off. If you're not hooked up to city water, you'll have to turn on your water pump to pump water from your uh, holding tank. And you've got a omnidirectional awning light there that you can turn on and off from the control panel as well. Here in the kitchen, a couple of things to cover. Uh, your fridge is a gas electric fridge. So this will run on propane or electricity turn it on just press the on button and what we usually recommend is set the mode to a for automatic in automatic mode it'll always check for electricity if it has electricity available as it does now it'll run on that but if you blow a breaker or somebody unplugs the trailer or something like that it'll sense that and it'll switch over to propane you can override the automatic to only run on electricity or only run on propane not a lot of situations where you'd want to do that though. Um, you may find that the uh, fridge cools down a little bit faster on propane than electricity. So if you are uh, just getting ready to load up and you want to cool your fridge down a little faster, you can uh, override the automatic to run it on gas only. Um, but having said that, it does take several hours for an RV fridge to cool down even on propane. So the best thing to do there is to get the fridge cooling the day before you plan to load it up. Uh, that way it's nice and cold when you put all your groceries into it. And this one has some temperature adjustment as well. Uh, one being the warmest, five being the coldest. I usually set it on four, but you might find that you need to uh, adjust that a little bit depending on external factors. Uh, so to uh, shut off the fridge, press and hold the on button. Press and hold the on button until it shuts off. 
If we don't give them to you in person when you're here, your keys are just right inside the uh, top, top uh, drawer of the fridge. Here at the oven and stove top, um, your stove burners all work on gas and they all use the piezo sparker here on the front. Always recommend anytime you change out a propane bottle or refill a propane bottle, anytime you have your propane disconnected, first thing you should do once you've reconnected that is come in here and light all three of these burners. Uh, once you've got all three of these burners lit, you know you've bled any air that might be in those, on the propane lines off of the system and your automatic appliances like your fridge, furnace and hot water tank will have no problem starting up. Your oven has a pilot light here at the back um, and this style of oven uh, you can actually light the pilot light with the piezo sparker so when you go to light the oven pilot light turn the knob over to pilot push in on that knob like I'm doing right now and then you can turn the piezo sparker to light the pilot underneath so, and you can see a blue flame there. Once you see a blue flame, hold this knob in for 10 or 15 seconds just for that uh, thermocouple to heat up. And then once you release the knob and the flame stays on, you can turn it up to temperature and the burner in the oven lights. Once you're finished using that oven, you can just turn it down to pilot mode and leave that pilot light burning or you can turn it all the way off and just uh, relight the pilot next time you need to use the oven. A couple of uh, switches here, one for your backlit um, oven knobs and one for the oven light itself. Um, your microwave is pretty straightforward, just like the microwave in your home. Uh, it does need to have 110 volt power, so you need to be plugged into services for that. It won't run off the battery. You've got your safe tech box here on the side of this cabinet. Um, so a little hidden storage area with 110 volt and 12 volt USB power outlets. Right below that is your power converter. This is the power center for the whole trailer. So this is where you'll find all of your 110 volt breakers and all of your 12 volt fuses. You've got mostly 15 amp fuses here with a couple of 40 amps. Uh, so not a bad idea to have some spare 15 and, and 40 amp fuses with you. It's not unheard of in an RV to blow a fuse. Uh, and if you've got some spares with you, that'll save you some headache out at the campground someday. Uh, safety feature uh, right here near the floor is your uh, propane and carbon monoxide detector. So this will do three things. It will, uh, it will alarm if it senses a propane leak. However, if you had a propane leak in the RV, you would most likely smell the propane before this alarm went off. Um, it can also alert you to a high carbon monoxide level. Um, but the most common thing that this does is alert you to low voltage. Because this is wired into the RV's 12 volt electrical system, if your RV battery starts to get low, this will chirp just like a smoke detector does when its battery is at the end of its life. Um, so if this starts beeping, uh, quite likely nothing to worry about. Uh, quite often all you need to do is plug in the RV to put a charge on the battery. Right here is your thermostat. So this controls both the heating and cooling systems for the RV. Um, there's no automatic mode, so you have to either set it to cooling or heating. Uh, as we turn it over to heat and turn up the thermostat, the furnace fan comes on immediately, um, but it's gonna be uh, uh, 10 or 15 seconds before the burner actually lights up. You should be able to hear that when it happens. Not sure if you could hear that in the video, but the uh, burner is now running. Once it comes up to temperature or you shut it off, uh, same thing happens only in reverse. The burner goes out immediately, but that fan now is gonna continue to run for 30 seconds to a minute just to go through its cycle. On the cooling setting, uh, same thing, uh, thermostat controlled, but you have low and high fan speeds. So these only apply to your air conditioning fan. The furnace only has one fan speed. 
So the automatic or always on and low and high fan speeds are for the uh, air conditioning fan only. It's a 30 amp power system in this trailer, so you have to choose between your air conditioner and your fireplace. You can't run both at the same time. I'm not sure when or why you would ever want to. Here in the bathroom, a couple of things uh, to go over. There's a notable power outlet in here. It's your GFI outlet with test and reset buttons on it. Just like the GFI outlets in your home, um, but uh, one big difference in an RV, all of your 110 volt power outlets are wired in series with this. So if you trip the GFI, you'll lose power at all of your outlets. So if you're ever plugged into power, wondering why none of your outlets are working, uh, come into the bathroom, press the reset button, everything should go back to normal. You've also got in here your Levelmate Pro panel. Um, that is to use your smartphone uh, to assist with the leveling of your RV. Um, you'll need to set this up the first time you use it and sync it to your phone. To do that, uh, search our uh, Setting Up Your Levelmate Pro on Venture RVs video. You've also uh, got in here, uh, obviously the toilet. Anytime you're using the sewer system in your RV, you want to make sure you use a good potent RV toilet chemical. Uh, it's available in powder, liquid, or tablet form. Whatever, whichever you use, make sure when you add chemical, uh, you can add it right into the toilet and put some water down with it. Uh, so pour some chemical into the bowl, push halfway down on the foot flush here to fill the bowl with water, and then push the rest of the way down to flush the whole works into the tank. That toilet chemical takes a little bit of water to activate it, so always make sure that you're uh, putting water down with the chemical. And you'll want to put new chemical in the toilet immediately after every time you dump your holding tank because you dumped the existing chemical out. Um, here in the uh, bunk bed area, not a whole bunch to tell you about here. Uh, each of the bunk beds has a 250 pound uh, capacity. Uh, bunk ladder uh, just uh, folds away like so. And there is actually a little hidden storage area in behind the bunk ladder. Um, what else? Your uh, emergency escape window here uh, can be used for ventilation if you want. Uh, so you can push open on that window and just latch it open. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky mechanism though. So I do recommend uh, just play with that uh, a little bit. Uh, get comfortable with it in case you ever do need to use it for an actual emergency situation. Um, if you do need to exit the RV through here, the window just hinges all the way up uh, and uh, pull the red tab to pull the screen out of the window frame. Another safety feature uh, is your smoke detector. Um, different from your propane detector, the smoke detector has its own battery. Um, so uh, you will need to check this battery periodically once or twice a year. Uh, just press the test button until you hear the beep and you know that the battery is not dead. Um, your stereo system, uh, this is AM, FM, CD, DVD, and Bluetooth. Um, and I just like to point out that there's two different speaker selections on here, zone one and zone two. Um, zone one being your inside speakers, zone two being your outside speakers. So if you are watching a DVD, on here just ensure that you have zone 2 turned off so that you're not uh, playing your DVD sound through your outside speakers. And here in the uh, master bedroom, uh, again not a whole lot to talk about in here, another emergency escape window, same operation as the other one. Uh, and if you choose, uh, you have a, a TV backer location here on the wall. Um, if you're going to mount a TV here, it's really important to remember that this wall is only one and a half inches thick. Uh, so don't use screws any thicker than or any uh, longer than an inch. Um, and there is a backer here. The backer is metal. So the easiest way to find that backer is with a magnet. Uh, the sticker will be very close, but it's not always in exactly the right spot. Uh, so make sure you locate that backer before you screw into the wall. And I think for the most part that covers it. Uh, hopefully you've learned something about the 2021 Sport Trek uh, by Venture RV 320ZIK. 
you have any questions, you can always uh, get in touch with us through our website uh, and uh, make sure to check out some of our other uh, walkthrough videos and uh, top five playlists and detailed construction videos on trailblazerrv.com. Thanks.